is one very busy, very talented, and very interesting man. Please welcome and enjoy Bill Curtis. Thank you. Very good. Ten years ago, I said, I'm not bragging, it was, but it wasn't a mistake. I said that the real problem is not a war in the Gulf, it is global warming. I also said that 99% of the scientists endorsed the theory and predicted, quote, increased extreme weather events. Not many people were listening. If you remember the new explorers, we based it on the scientific method. You observe a problem, you hypothesize what the problem might be, you go out and experiment and gather data to resolve it, and then come to a conclusion. Why are we having so many violent hurricanes? Is it unusual? Well, not if you were listening to the experts 10 years ago. They predicted more extreme weather events, just like Katrina. Why? Because the world is getting hotter, specifically the water. 10 years ago, my lead-in introduction looked something like this. It was always supposed to be gradual, this warming of the earth. Something we could ignore until the next century. We were told it might not even be true. It was just theoretical or political. But now the world is changing. It is warming. Finally, the world is seeing what global warming can mean. There's a Greek word called peripateia, in which all that you have learned and believed in your life is suddenly revealed to you as being wrong. George Ryan in 1999 found 13 innocent men on death row. Uh, he was shocked. It was a historic decision made not by a lawyer, but a former pharmacist. Governor, you declared a moratorium on executions in Illinois. Why? We had a flawed system, Bill, a system that didn't work. Uh, we almost uh, executed innocent people, uh, 13 times as a matter of fact. And, and you know, Bill, I don't have to say this, it goes without saying. If we're going to have a system, it's got to be perfect. Now, can we have a system that is? I don't know at this point. There was a uh, research paper from Columbia University Law School that said, uh, after studying 6,000 capital cases from 1976 to today, they found 68% reversible error in all the capital trials that they studied. Because of bad defense lawyers, overzealous prosecutor suppressing evidence, the judge, all the appeals project to put a man on death row, not just guilty, on death row. Nothing to it, folks. I'm Bill Curtis, and I am here tonight to celebrate the 150th year of the YMCA of Metropolitan Chicago. Welcome. When many of us, it's going to be a great night. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Field Museum. If it is true that your entire life flashes before you when you before you die. Well, Shirley MacLaine's time, when it comes, she'll have to sit through a triple feature. And that's only for this lifetime. Please welcome the Forum Secretary, Treasurer, Janet Jackson. We'll be watching you, Janet, and playing the role of Justin Timberlake, Fred Shea, Vice President of Sales for a Hyatt Hotel and Resort. <laughs> Want to invite you to next year's event? We'll throw in King Tut. You won't want to miss it. Finally, we thank and invite you to dance to the big 30-piece, 32, 32-piece 32 orchestra of Rich Daniels. Good night, everybody. He's a big 
fan of Michael Pollan, and Bill was excited simply to be here to introduce him, but we were thrilled when he asked us, um, and he agreed, to lead Michael in conversation. Please welcome to our stage broadcasting legend and great friend of the Chicago Public Library, Bill Curtis. This is uh, in defense of food, and I must say that I started with the botany of desire, and I said, oh, a guy who likes flowers. And it was, <laughs> it was informative. But when I reached the omnivore's dilemma, it became something of a Bible, an inspiration. What you've laid out is the foundation of, um, one, your book, but also the attack on uh, the current uh, food supply. And one of the reasons is that, in addition to what you've pointed out, omega-3 is associated with freshness. Yes, that's right. So when we want to pull freshness out to extend shelf life, we're pulling omega-3 out. And there are because many. It goes bad quickly. Yeah, yeah. it goes rancid. And uh, there are many who believe that we're suffering a deficiency, much like beriberi and scurvy. Yeah. Uh, which is which result? You know, I get all this from your books. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's good for you to I agree know, with I, me. I, no, but it's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it always helps. <laughs> it's very difficult to uh, see up here past the lights, but they're giving you a standing ovation. <laughs> Welcome to Chicago. Well, it's a, it's a great honor for me to be here in this. It's an honor, and I appreciate very much that I've been invited. I particularly appreciate that they suggested that we be on this platform together. It's delighted to be with Thank you. you. Well, when the boss calls, I'm there. <laughs> the boss and the mentor and hero. The subject tonight is the Holocaust. Journalists can, especially someone in your position, can see a whole career devote 60 years to historical events linking one after another. So we had the Holocaust and the Nuremberg trial, um, the formation of Israel, and then you even enjoyed a rare uh, opportunity to bring two presidents together, uh, President Sadat and President Begin. Could you tell us about that? <laughs> There was a time, a time before cable, when the local anchor man reigned supreme. When people believed everything they heard on TV. This was an age when only men were allowed to read the news. And in San Diego, one anchor man was more man than the rest. His name was Ron Burgundy. Uh. Undefeated professional boxer Floyd Bunny Mayweather has the fastest hands boxing has ever seen. So I've come to this ring to see who's faster on the internet. I'll be using the 3G AT&T laptop connect card. He won't. So I can browse the web faster, email business plans faster, all on the go. I'm Bill Curtis, and I'm faster than Floyd Mayweather. Michael Phelps. Andy Roddick. I have a lot of other things. <laughs> well, these people like to get to bed. Well, well it's awfully good to have been with you. I, I honor you for what you stand for and what you did. And Indeed. I appreciate this guy. He's one of the great journalists of our time. Oh, you're, you're great. And I'm always looking for that big story, you know. Uh, I still get a fire in the belly, and uh, I'm still looking. Go to black. <laughs> Thank you. 